Now look at our significantly important prophetic times here. Look at how it all fits together powerfully. Here's some of our dates. 457 to 34 AD is the time especially lauded for the Jews. How do we know that that's right? Because it lines up perfectly with the baptism, death of the Messiah, and the decree, uh, or pardon me, the closing of the covenant here in the gospel going to the Gentiles. So this is a lot. We've also seen that here our 1,260 years was the reign of the papacy from 538 A.D. until 1798 when it received a deadly wound. So far so good, everyone? And here we move from 457 all the way down, 2300 prophetic days or literal years, drops us in 1844 A.D. Is that after the reign of the little horn, yes or no? Yeah, because it has to come after the little horn, so it has to be after 1798 but it has to be before the second coming. Now, this gets powerful. Open your Bibles. I had you in Hebrews, but we didn't go there. Go to Revelation. Okay, Revelation. Revelation. Chapter 6. What chapter? chapter six. 6. Now, we've already read this verse once. We're going to read it again. Revelation chapter 6. We're in verse 10. Revelation chapter 6, verse 10. We'll pick it up in verse 9. We've already read this. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had held. Verse 10, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you what? Judge. So they were waiting for the judgment, the vindication of God and His cause and of them because they had been slain because they clung to the word. So they're saying, How long? Hey, that was the same question in Daniel chapter 8. How long? Now look at Revelation chapter 14. Quick question. Had the judgment begun when they were crying out how long? It couldn't have because they wouldn't be saying what? How long till it starts? But look what happens in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. John sees these mighty angels. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is going to come. Yes. Whoo! You never saw that before, did you? The hour of His judgment what? Yes. It, what tense is that? That's present tense! Whoa! The hour of His judgment is come! And you think, oh, well, well really? Yeah, Really? The hour of His judgment is come and worship Him that made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the springs of waters. I'm going to follow this all the way through. Verse 8, the next angel. Another angel followed them saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. You say, what does that mean? Keep coming and I'll tell you what it means. That's the second angel. Babylon has fallen. Verse 9, then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand. He himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of, faith of Jesus. Now watch this. Verse 14. What's the next thing John sees? Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and one on the cloud sat like the Son of Man. Who is that? Jesus. Jesus, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. What's a sickle for? Harvesting. Verse 15, another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, thrust in your sickle and reap for the time has come. The what has come? The, see, God operates everything on a schedule. Amen? The time has come, notice what it says, for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is right. Verse 16, so he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped. What's being described here? What event is that? That's the second coming. Amen. Didn't we read that in Matthew chapter 13? Let both grow together until the harvest. And here in Revelation chapter 14, it says the time for the harvest is here. Go get him, Jesus. And he's sending out his angels and he's reaping those that are putting their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and those that aren't are being excluded. Now here's the thing I want you to see. What comes first? Six or 14? What comes first? So you're counting. One, two, three, four, five, 
Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So six comes before fourteen. Go back and read verses six and seven. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. You know what that means? There will be a time before the harvest. Right? Is that before the harvest? Yes or no? There will be a time before the harvest that people will be saying, The judgment is come. Not the judgment is coming, but the judgment is come. Beloved, you and I are living in that judgment hour. We are living in the final phase of Jesus' ministry. Jesus was the lamb. Amen? But when he returns the second time, he's not a lamb. Amen? And Jesus was the priest. Amen? We've already looked at that. He's the high priest. Right? Here he's the lamb. Died on that altar. And he goes in here and he's our priest. Right? Mediating for us and interceding for us. As Paul said, he ever lives to make intercession for us. And then he moves. In. There's only three phases, beloved. When Jesus Christ moves into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. You say, well, the most holy place is in the heavenly sanctuary. Look at, you're still there in Revelation 14. Look at it. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter what? 11. 11. Give me two minutes and this is done. Maybe three. Revelation chapter 11. Verse 19, Revelation verse 11, chapter 11, verse 19, John says, Then the temple of God was opened where? In heaven. in heaven, and the ark of His covenant was seen in His temple. What was seen in His temple? The ark of the covenant. Is there an ark in that? Is there an ark in the heavenly temple? Yeah, John saw it. And so Jesus would eventually have to make His transition into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. And beloved, when he makes his transition in there, here he's lamb, here he's priest, but beloved, when Jesus returns, he doesn't return as a lamb. Amen? When Jesus returns, he doesn't return as a priest. Just as the high priest went into the, 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 the most holy place on the Day of Atonement, so to our high priest, Jesus Christ, would go in one final act of ministry before he would lay down his priestly garments, lay down his priestly center, censer, and return as King of kings and Lord of lords. 